So it's Monday morning, it's Queen's birthday weekend, so it's a public holiday for everybody. Today I just wanted to talk about the A7 III. So if you guys saw my previous video, you know that I sold one of my A7R III's, the other one which I'm filming on now, and I bought a A7 Mark III. Um, the reason I did that was because I needed one camera dedicated to YouTube, which is probably going to be this A7R III, or one of these, I'm not really fussed, but uh, so I sold one to buy two of these. Now on Sunday I shot a wedding and I shot the A7R 3 and the A7 Mark 3 side by side so I have a really good idea of the differences. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me but this is first hand experience on a real wedding. There's no bias opinions. I paid for both of these cameras. Hopefully you guys know by now that I'm really non-biased and uh, I just use the gear that works for me. The biggest difference that I've seen between the R3 and the A7 III, not a major, but it is a major at the same time, is the rear LCD screen. This rear LCD screen on the A7 Mark III is rubbish. Yeah, it's really not good enough for the kind of technology that we have in cameras these days. The A7 R3 one isn't great either, but it's definitely better than the A7 Mark III. The reason I say that is because it has like a massive color shift for areas that seem overexposed on the back LCD but they're really not. When you look at them through the viewfinder they're fine um, and obviously when you get back in the computer they're fine as well. But areas that seem overexposed will come out, they'll look pink or something on the back of the screen. Um, obviously it just doesn't have the color depth or whatever and the resolution on the rear of it. Yeah that's probably the biggest downside of the camera. So realistically it's not a massive problem. You can just look through the viewfinder and you know, I don't really need to look at my images a whole lot anyway. I don't have auto preview on or anything like that. So it's a pain. It's definitely not as good as the A7R3, but like I said, the A7R3 isn't amazing either. All the other cameras I've tried, like the Nikon Z6, Z7, the EOS R, they all have better rear LCD screens by quite a bit. But the, the A7 Mark III is definitely the worst. The viewfinder, I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't be good enough. I did have a quick play with it back, you know, I've, I've tried the camera a whole bunch, but I've never shot a full wedding with it or anything like that. I was worried that, you know, from all your comments and all the feedback I've had, that the A7 Mark III viewfinder would be a kind of deal breaker. But to be honest, I didn't really notice a massive difference. Um, they both look fine. They both look really good. Um, the A7R 3 is, you can tell it's a little bit better shooting them side by side, but I suspect if you didn't have an R3 and a 7 III side by side, like if you just had two A7 III's, I think the viewfinder's fine. Like the EOS R viewfinder and the Nikon Z6 and Z7 viewfinders are probably better quality, but not by a whole lot. You know, they are better, but it, it's, it, I find the A7 III viewfinder is fine. The second thing I noticed was a lot of guys were saying the focus on the A7 Mark III is so much better than the R3 and I just don't find that the case at all. I think they're pretty much the same. The only difference and a plus for the A7 III, I did notice that when I was composing stuff on the edge of the frame or anything like that or if I was running around tracking someone's eye, it wouldn't lose it as much because on the A7 R3, when you get to that kind of outside edge, you'd lose the focus point and it would freak out because it goes past that phase detect. Yeah, the A7 III, in terms of speed, accuracy, performance, the A7 III and the R3, the focus systems are the same, in my opinion, but the A7 III just goes to the edge. Um, I was shooting in really low light situations, I was shooting in bright situations, so we had the whole mix on this wedding, and yeah, it was. Um, they were both fantastic. I really like it, I'm, I'm happy with the A7 III, it's great. I know that the A7R III should be tougher because it's all metal, where the A7 Mark III is half metal, half plastic. Only time can tell, I can't really judge that because I've only shot one wedding with it so far. And It did rain on us a little bit, um, it was quite wet through the ceremony, and when I went outside to meet the bride in the car it was raining fairly hard, and uh, then it stopped and the sun came out and it was great. But I didn't have any issues with that, there was no, it didn't freak out in the rain or anything, it did get fairly wet, but I am a little bit more nervous about it because everything that I understand, I can't find any solid information, any solid specs or you know anything in print from Sony that says the R3 is better than the A7 III. You guys know I'm a Sony New Zealand advocate and I have access to talking to all these people and you know everybody I've talked to says that the A7 R3 is slightly more weather sealed than the A7 III. It's just what I've been told, I don't know what the facts are. In terms of image quality, it's fine, it's really good. I think it has a slight edge. I think the A7 III has a slight edge over the R3 in terms of low light performance. 
it's not a massive difference again i'm sure if you put them side by side in terms of like test charts and stuff like that you'd probably see that the a7 III would be a fairly good margin better but in real world situations again you know i shot the speeches with both cameras but it was really dark and i and i looking at the files now i've already done a sneak peek which is obviously the images you guys are seeing now they look fantastic so image quality obviously if you're like a landscape photographer or doing commercial or something a lot let me put this camera down so image quality obviously if you're doing landscape a lot or commercial photography you're probably better off going with the r3 just because it has almost double the resolution i'm not the kind of photographer that worries really uh, that worries heavily about megapixels and sharpness as much as some each to their own i find the images out of the a7 III are fantastic i expected them to be great so it's not a surprise for me um, obviously you can get a lot more detail out of the a7 r3 um, I shot the A7 Mark III in compressed as well as the R3. And yeah, I'm, all of these images I'm showing you are all from the A7 Mark III. If you're looking for specs and stuff like that and, you know, focus charts and exact differences between ISOs, I'm not your YouTuber to follow. Uh, there's a whole bunch of videos that you can check out on that with terms of specs and like focus charts and really hardcore ISO testing. But I'm only really concerned about stuff that worries me as a full-time working professional doing weddings full-time you know i'm doing about 50 weddings a year and i need something that's going to be solid it's going to get me the image quality i need the colors i like i did find the a7 III colors are really good no issues with it at all other than it was distracting me a little bit on the back lcd screen when i was first looking through them and then i quickly learned it was just the lcd screen and not the actual image quality i don't think there's any winner here because they're just different cameras one of them is obviously double the resolution and that's the main difference behind it so it's really just going to come down to budget and how much you want to spend how much resolution you feel you need but i would honestly say that in most cases the a7 III and 24 megapixels is going to be plenty for everybody i think some people feel like they need a lot more resolution than they do i remember when i went to queenstown and i I had the A9 with me and that was obviously 24 megapixels and I never felt like when I was editing the photos or printing them uh, I needed more resolution. One of my clients bought a 1.5 meter wide panorama from my A9 down in Queenstown and the image was amazing. It, it looked perfectly sharp even up close. There is one main difference between the R3 and the A7 III that I should note before I finish this video, and that is that the A7 R3 has a rated shutter count at 500,000 clicks. You know, after 500,000 clicks, that's what it's tested to, and that's what it should last. And the A7 III is half that at 250,000 clicks. Not a lot of people know that, I've found out, and um, it's a big difference. <laughs> so I would expect the A7 R3 to last a lot longer than the A7 III. But in saying that, I've never had any issues with any of my cameras and 500,000 clicks is a lot. I wouldn't get there. It would take me a few years to get to 500,000 clicks on one of these cameras. So the one I just sold had about 75,000 clicks on it and I'd shot about 100 weddings in two years with my A7 R3 that I sold and never had any issues. It was perfect, just as it was when I sold it. I can't not recommend either of them. They're, they're both really fantastic, so I'm sorry if that doesn't help you guys. But if you can't afford the A7 R3 and you're all stressed out about it, then just get the A7 III and you'll be super happy with it. If I could go back in time and tell Sony to change a couple of things, the LCD screen would definitely be number one. It's just nowhere near good enough for the money you pay and, and the technology we have these days. So that's my experience with the A7 Mark III. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a couple of days where I'm going to go through all these Samyang lenses. A sneak peek, I've had a quick play with this 85mm 1.4 Samyang and it's pretty awesome. It's definitely exceeded my expectations. I don't think it's as good as the G Master but it's very very close and it's a lot cheaper. You guys know I already have the 35mm Samyang and this week is the week that I'm going to go through all those lenses because I have to get them back by the 6th. Thanks for following along guys. Subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow.